What is up, everybody? It is your friend and the leader of the Justice League, Justice West, here to talk about something that just makes your playing sound awesome and adds great dynamics to what you already do, and that is open-voiced chords. Now, you may be saying, I know G, I know C, I know D, I know this beginner stuff, and what the open voice chords allow you to do is take these normal chords you would play every day and add more color, flavor, and expression to your playing. All right, let's walk through a few of my favorites. So if you're just getting started, the most popular, well, besides E major, the second most popular guitar chord I feel like is G major. To play G major, you would take your middle finger and put it on G on the third fret of the top E string. Then you would take your first finger and put it on B on the second fret of the A string. And then you would take your ring finger and put that on the third fret on the high E string. Now, another way to play this is to move your ring finger up a string to the third fret of the B string and put your pinky below that. Super awesome chord. You'll use it all the time. G is in all the best songs that involve guitar, in my opinion. Uh, so from there, you play this chord and you play it all the time. And in a song, you might use it too much. You might use it so much that it sounds repetitive or the song kind of loses its color. And that's where this open voice G major chord comes in. Now to play this, you'll take your first finger and put it on the 10th fret on the A string. Then you're gonna take your ring finger and put it on the 12th fret of the D string. Now you're not gonna play anything on the G string. You're gonna let it ring open. So that's where we're getting kind of this doubling of the note G. Now you're gonna put your pinky on the 12th fret of the B string and that is our major third. So now that we have that chord, we can go into what the right hand pattern is doing to make it sound so lush. So this rhythm that I've put together is composed in three, four. So you're focusing more on one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. A triplet feel, kind of a ballroom dance of, and that's what gives it the lush vibe. You know, when you're thinking about techniques, you have to think of what techniques come from where because that's what's going to define the energy of what you're playing. So, for instance, chicken picking sounds like country music. So you could be playing an R&B song, but let's say you want to add country flavor to your solo, you could add the technique of chicken picking. So just like combining chords can create a vibe, so can combining technique. To get into this, we're going to do a downstroke with our thumb. Now we're going to pluck up on the B string with our middle finger. And then we're going to pluck up on the G string with our first finger. And then we're going to do a down with our thumb on the D string. And then we're going to repeat that three more times. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One thing to keep in mind to keep this looping around is that we're not going to the D string on that fourth come around with the up plucks. And A string, D string, D string, D string, A string, D string, D string, D, A. That's how you'll get a consistent walking rhythm to keep it sounding like you're moving the bass notes. It's what a bass player would play to imply rhythm in a band scenario. And we're kind of condensing the band into our left and our right hand. All right, let's try to play that together. I'm going to count us in slowly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, 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 four, one. 
Now that you've got the rhythm down on that open G chord, we can expand to the next level of this technique, which is adding in more chord voicings, more open voice chords. So those of you who know kind of the bar chord from the A string shapes, we don't have to go on on this topic for a long time. You know that this G open is just taking, you know, your ring finger off of the G string. So now we're gonna play what would be an E minor uh, bar chord shape from the A string, which you're gonna bar the seventh fret, which is your first finger, and then put your ring finger on the on B, which is the ninth fret on the D string. And then you're gonna put your pinky finger on E, which is also on the ninth fret. And then you're gonna put your middle finger on G, which is on the Whoa, 8th fret. <laughs> so to make this an open voice chord, we need an open string to open the chord up. You know, I need a, a counter for every time I say open in this. We're going to remove our pinky finger to do that. And we're going to lift our first finger from barring that 7th fret. So the first chord is G major. Now we're to E minor. Now the great thing about guitar is that most chord shapes are parallel. And when I say parallel, I mean that you can use the same shape in different positions of the neck to get an awesome effect, especially when it comes to this open voice chord uh, technique. So we're gonna take what would be the G major. Now we're gonna slide it down so that our first finger is on D on the A string or the fifth fret, keeping that same spacing with, uh, with our fingers and keeping that fret in the middle of our first finger and our ring finger and pinky. So now we have this open D major. G major, E minor, D major. Now we're gonna play and a lot of theory people will argue with me on this, but this is the easiest way to say it for a guitar player. It's a minor chord with a sharp five. That is not the proper name of the chord from a theory standpoint, but this is the only way you will remember how to play this chord. So after our D major, we're dropping our finger down to C sharp or to the one, two, three, fourth fret. So we're gonna play the fourth fret on the A string with our first finger. And then we're gonna take our pinky and we're going to play the seventh fret on the D string. Now we're gonna let that G ring out again. And we're gonna put our middle finger on the fifth fret of the B string. So now we have one, two, three, four chords to add to our arsenal of open chord voicings. And we're not done yet. So now we're gonna take that G major shape once again, and we're going to play it starting on the third fret of the A string to get a C major. Now we're at C major, which is first finger on the third fret of the A string, ring finger on the fifth fret of the D string, and our pinky on the fifth fret of the B string. Now we're gonna play a B minor, which I love this voicing so much. We're gonna take our first finger and put it on the second fret of the A string. We're gonna put our ring finger on the fourth fret of the D string, and we're gonna put our middle finger on the third fret of the B string. So we have our G chord. We have our E minor, which is the same finger pattern and shape or parallel shape of our B minor. So one thing to consider is that it makes it much easier to slide between these chords when you're using the same shape. So going minor to minor, or going major to major. Mm -hmm. 
So cool, right? And it sounds so pretty, but you're not having to use a lot of effort or a lot of finger strength to play these chords. I call this one of the tuning techniques, where after you tune a guitar, you can play something that impresses everybody in the room. So we're gonna take our major shape from the G. Now we're going to play that starting from the first fret of the A string. So that's our first finger on B flat on the A string. We're gonna take our ring finger and put that on the third fret of the D string. Let that G keep ringing out. We're gonna play our pinky on the third fret of the B string. Now the next chord walking down in sequence would just be a simple A minor, A minor seven. So that's our middle finger on the second fret of the D string and our first finger on the first fret of the B string. Everything else is open. And then we can end on a nice simple G major. I hope this lesson has been helpful. I do want to review the right hand rhythm one more time before we all go, just to make sure everybody's got that down. So again, it'll be pluck down with our thumb, pluck up with our middle finger, pluck up with our first finger, and then down with our thumb. So those strings will be A string, B string, G string, D string. So to loop that picking pattern around, we're just using those bottom three notes to keep the continuous motor going. Let's just play that together one more time before we go. I'll count us in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, I appreciate you guys for watching this. Big thanks to my friends at Fender for letting me do another technique of the week. And add this into your plan to add some color, some finesse, and some character. Uh, hope to talk to you guys again. I am out of here. Peace.